Fanatsu Maniluhu, Zeta Setbi Itautauta, Iman Mapus Pagu, Zani Man Mamaila, Namet Good Ianitin Mizu, Zatinilaika Nu I Tempun Gita Nota. Stand, my brothers and sisters, let us serve our people. For those of the past, today and generations to come, let your spirit be strong, for the times are changing upon our land. On January 17, 2007, a team of 14 students and two faculty members gathered together for the first time on the campus of the University of Guam in the Western Pacific. Our course syllabus introduced us to the idea that all people are created to carry forward an ever-advancing civilization. This became the starting point of our learning endeavor. It was on the first day of our class we learned that development begins at the local level. It emerges from the grassroots transforming society, preserving human honor, developing people's skills, and most importantly, motivating society to transform itself. In this class, we explored the reason behind the wide gap in wealth, power, and prestige between the East and West or north and south. Upon this exploration, we asked ourselves, how did this gap come to be, and what should and what can be done about it? <laughs> the concept of development has proven to be complex, since it means different things to different people. On the one hand, it is value-laden, and yet scientific and material. It involves both moral and ethical dimensions. The goal of development is often one that captures some notion of a desired state of affairs, yet the problem lies in who's defining that state. The West has often been criticized for imposing its goals and values on the East and in turn the East has been likewise criticized for its internal barriers to progress. Both sides of the debate struggle with understanding the dynamic elements of change and progress. Both are shaped by history and culture. Our task is to appreciate the complexity of this debate and in the process reflect on our own island society and its future. As students of higher learning, we appreciate the value of academic discourse within the classroom setting. We are increasingly becoming aware of the significance of stepping out of the classroom and engaging the world. Our travel to Bali as one of the components of this community development capstone course brought to us a reality that books alone could not. It was a reality that surrounded us and engulfed us. As much as we would love to retain all the knowledge that is bestowed upon us throughout our lives, and especially during our college life, we must realize that this is impossible. Instead, our feeble minds are forced to summarize our experiences and key highlights of our journey. We believe that the greatest way to learn is to experience the subject matter firsthand when we interact with our subject matter and personalize our experience with what we have learned in the classroom we gain a much better understanding of the world we live in. Once we leave our comfort zone our minds become more perceptive and new ideas begin to formulate through the vibrant images imprinted upon us. If we can step out of our comfort zone and engage ourselves with the world around us, we can capture an experience not only with our minds,
but with all our senses, sight, sound, touch, taste, and whether we like it or not, smell. This is why it is so crucial to step out of the classroom, even for a brief period of time, for these are the moments that are most transformative. We step out of our classroom to enhance our learning experiences by applying it to our lives, to escape the often monotonous classroom environment and reignite our passion for learning. Stepping out of the box of our classroom and textbooks breaks down the barriers that prevent us from engaging our classmates and professors in conversation that would not be possible within its confines. We may not remember every lecture or every exam, but rare moments and opportunities, such as our time in Bali, allowed us to cast our net. It empowered us with a renewed global mindset to propel ourselves and thus our island community into the 21st century. Dr. Kirk Johnson, who we fondly refer to as Dr. J, pulled many of us into this course by saying, this is a serious opportunity to study another culture firsthand, a life-changing experience. And indeed, it proved to be what Dr. Rebecca Stephenson, who we fondly refer to as Dr. Steffi, calls simply a singular experience. Guam, locally known as Guahan, is the southernmost and largest island of the Mariana Archipelago in Micronesia. Guam was initially claimed by Spain in 1565 and remained a Spanish colony until it was ceded to the United States of America in 1898 through the Treaty of Paris. At the start of World War II, Japan, which was already present in other parts of Micronesia, captured Guam on December 8, 1941. U.S. forces retook Guam on July 21, 1944, and today it has become an important strategic position for U.S. defense. Guam is the westernmost possession of the United States and was the only U.S. soil occupied by a foreign power during wartime. The Guam Organic Act of 1950 established the island as an unincorporated territory of the U.S. and granted U.S. citizenship to its people. Chamoru, the indigenous inhabitants of Guam represent the largest ethnic group and along with an array of diverse cultures comprise the estimated population of 170,000. The rich rainbow diversity on this 210 square mile island with its lush emerald green landscapes is surrounded by the tranquil hues of the deep blue Pacific Ocean. This tropical paradise we call home. Today, Guahan seems to be in a disquieting state of ill health. News headlines in our local media often report a community in crisis. Indeed, our community faces many serious challenges, from a government deficit of $400 million to rising utility and gas rates, from the social disharmony of increasing drug-related crime.